All right, so what I would like to do today is I'm going to model for you how to do a soapstone. And there are many uh, strategies that teachers use when doing a close reading. I'm sure um, in the past, maybe in sixth grade, you've done a close reading before. But um, I like the soapstone. I think it's less work and less work, but also um, it's very efficient and it allows you to gather information from nonfiction articles quickly. Um, we're going to kind of transition after our new year, and we'll be leaving fiction writing, so the made-up stories like Tangerine and stuff, and we'll be kind of deeping, or diving deep into nonfiction writing. So a lot of articles will be coming your way, and you'll be using the soapstone to uh, gather information from it. So I'm going to model today how a soapstone works. You will need the following supplies in front of you. You're going to need the actual soapstone uh, paper, and you're going to need the article that you just got done reading, um, and then you're also going to need, you don't need to grab all of the highlighters right now. You'll only grab the color of the highlighter that we are using when I let you know. Okay, so let's get started. If you turn your soapstone uh, graphic organizer, the answer sheet, over, on the back you're going to see notes. Soapstone is actually an acronym, and the letters actually stand for something. So the S in soapstone is going to stand for subject. Um, the occasion is the O, and then you have the audience, and so forth. So as you can see, soapstone actually is an acronym that stands uh, for specific letters that we'll be uh, looking for. So let's talk about each one quickly so that you know what you're looking for when I model. The subject is going to be simply um, what the article is about, right? It's going to be the subject matter. I don't think that one's hard. That one will be hard for you to remember. All right, so then you have occasion. I think this one's hard. I'd like for you to put a star next to it, and I'd like for you to underline the things that I underline. The time and place of a piece, the context that promoted the writing. Writing does not occur in a vacuum. All writers are influenced by a larger occasion, an environment of ideas, attitudes, and emotions that swirl around a broad issue. Then there is the immediate occasion, an event or situation that catches the writer's attention and triggers a response. Okay, so basically um, something happened that made the writer trigger a response. Um, maybe, you know, a horrible volcano happened, and that's going to be the occasion. That's what triggered the response for the writer to come up with um, writing this article in the first place. So honestly, it's almost like I would encourage you maybe to write down um, off to the side that it's the reason for the article. Um, it's what prompted the writer to start writing about the subject. So something happened that made this writer all of a sudden want to get up and write an article about uh, volcanoes, let's say. All right. Next then you have the audience. Well, who is uh, the writer directing this article towards? Who is he thinking most likely will read his article. And anything that I say, you can pause the video and you can kind of write down here off to the side. So I'm telling you now that audience is who the piece is directed towards. And you're going to want to kind of determine who maybe would take interest. Is it a specific group of people, like a target audience? So if I were writing a article about students getting paid for good grades, who do you think my audience would be? Well, probably teachers and students, right? Anybody that's involved in a school. So then you can go on to what is the purpose. And the purpose of writing, you know, an article, um, you're going to probably want students, as you can see it says here, students need to consider the purpose of the text in order to develop the thesis or the argument. They should ask themselves, why do I want my um, audience to think or do as a result of reading this? So I kind of think about this from the writer's perspective when I try to figure out what the purpose is of an article. I want to know, um, like, what is, I would write this down, what is the author, what kind of a response is the author wanting from you? What kind of a reaction 
does the author want from you? Does the author want you to respond um, by taking action and going out and doing something? The author has a purpose for it, and it's maybe it's to get you fired up. Maybe it's to make you mad. Maybe it's to make you quit smoking. But most of the time, there's a purpose behind it. And then if you scroll down, you're going to see who is the speaker. This is the easiest one to find. It's the author. Just look for by and then the person's name. Tone is next. And this is going to be the attitude. Like, what does the author feel about the subject that he, she is writing about? You know, is the author... Um, and you're going to look at the word choice to, to help you kind of figure this out. I would underline word choice. You know, is the author... Um, Oh, I don't know. Are they um, are they angry? You could write that down. Are they being um, are they being sarcastic? Right, that could be another one. Um, are they upset? Are they um, they could be excited? These are all examples of tone. They could be um, bored. They also could be anxious about whatever they're writing about. That's an O. Um, you also might have a author that is not, they could be biased or they could be not biased depending on the situation, okay? So maybe you want to jot some of those answers down because when you're asked for the tone, you can pause this if you want, when they ask you for the tone, you're going to want to be able to have answers like what I just wrote down. So I just gave you several examples that you could use. Next, I'm going to ask you to get highlighters and we're going to assign specific colors to uh, specific areas on the soapstone. So we're going to go ahead and we're going, you can go ahead and get a yellow highlighter and you're going to assign yellow to subject. So. What I'm going to have you do actually also right now is you can cross out analysis and I just want you to know that that's a fancy word. I want you to write answer up at the top. Okay? You're going to put your answer in this column. Your text evidence that supports the answer you write down, that's a lot of writing. So I just kind of thought it might be kind of nice for you guys. So if you write down that the subject is um, smoking, that you're going to stop smoking. Um, that's the subject of the article. They're going to tell you how to quit smoking. Each time you find evidence of how to quit smoking, I want you to highlight it yellow. That way you don't have to sit here and write out all of the text evidence because that would take forever and nobody has time for that. Okay? So you can go ahead and we're going to assign um, pink to occasion. We're going to assign green to audience. If I'm going too fast, you can just pause the video. Then we're going to assign blue to purpose, orange to speaker, and purple to tone. So again, pause the video and get those written down so that you know which colors you're going to highlight for text evidence that supports. So for example, if you found an example of the author being sarcastic for tone, you would highlight whatever they wrote down that shows them being sarcastic purple. Okay? All right, and that is how we will identify our evidence for our soapstone. All right, so let's, you've already read the article. So the first thing we have to do is find evidence for subject. And we have um, clearly, I think, uh, that the evidence for the subject here is violent video games. After reading uh, this article about how a woman, you know, thinks it's silly that people are overreacting to not being able to ban violent video games. Uh, I definitely think the subject is video games. Um, and until you get used to these colors, I think it's a good idea that you write off to the side um, what the yellow is standing for. So we know that the yellow is standing for subject because subject is the S in soapstone. So go ahead and take a second and make sure that you found the examples. Um, you're highlighting them yellow. I found three examples. There could be more, but these are the three that I would like for you to copy down. Because remember, I'm just modeling how to do this. So you want to be listening carefully about how to find examples of the uh, acronym SOAPSTONE so that when I ask you to do it on your own, you will know how. 
So we just practiced finding the subject. It's what the article is about. Be careful. This is a really good example that you can't always rely on the title because this title has some hidden meaning. Um, I actually see tone here, but we'll talk about that later. So for right now, uh, the subject is video games, and I've highlighted the evidence yellow. All right, so pause the video and get that written down. Make sure you write the answer. Remember that analysis is the same thing as the answer. Write down the answer in that space and then identify it over here by highlighting evidence of it. You can pause the video and then unpause it when you're ready to move on to the next one. All right, so now we have occasion. Occasion is, you know, and I love that Right, if you ever forget what occasion is, yeah, you can turn it on the back and read those notes, or you can. I ask you questions um, underneath occasion to kind of help you figure out uh, or kind of like trigger your memory. So let's see what occasion is. What may have prompted the author to write this piece? What led to its publication? You know, something must have happened that caused the author to write about violent video games. Well, Make sure you have, go ahead and write this answer down. Since you've read this before, you should know the Supreme Court will not ban violent video games to minors, kids under the age of 18. California wanted to ban them. California said, we need to ban articles. Or sorry, we need to ban, we need to ban violent video games for kids under the age of 18. Supreme Court said, not according to the First Amendment, you may not ban video games. Publishers have the right to make video games, and it's a parent's decision whether or not the kid will be able to play it. So the Supreme Court will not ban them. That is what happened, and that is the reason why this author decided to write this article. So I found the occasion in pink, and I highlighted it pink, and I need you to pause the video until you have done what I have here. Make sure you write the answer for occasion in this spot. All right, next is audience. So now I'm going to be using a green highlighter for audience. And I have to find some text evidence in the article that shows who this article was written for. Who will most likely be reading this? Well, I definitely found one over here where you can see where it says the people under the age of 18. So I labeled it audience. So I would like for you to do the exact same thing. Again, pausing is fine. Um, and then as you can see, I wrote that over here where my answer uh, space is. I also saw something down here where it says that young teens, so I added young teens on my answer sheet, which you should probably do as well. And then I also found that this article could be written for parents would probably have an interest. So I highlighted parents green and I added parents on my answer sheet. So go ahead and make sure you add everything that I have for green. As you can see, I'm labeling it audience until I get better um, at knowing that and just remembering that green stands for audience. But that's kind of hard right now since we're just learning it for the first time. All right, so after green comes blue, again, if I'm going to fast pause the video while you add all of these notes... Now I have to figure out the purpose, and purpose is hard, so I'm going to read my little questions here to review what it is. What is the speaker's purpose? What seems to be the emotional state of the speaker? How is the speaker trying to spark a reaction in the audience? Okay, well, I think that this speaker, I think she wants us to see that there's, there's a need for more research. Um, I think, honestly, that is her purpose for writing this. She goes on and on and on about how... She understands that parents might be mad that we won't ban violent video games, but at the same point, I really feel like our speaker is um, saying, you know, hey guys, slow down a second here. Let's take a look at the facts, and I don't think we have enough. I think she wants us to see that we need to get some more evidence before we start going around telling kids under the age of 18, um, adulthood, that they're not allowed to play video games. We need a lot more research to prove this. So I took my blue highlighter and I went through the article and I found and I highlighted anywhere I could in blue, which shows her discussing the need for more research. Right here, but more research, or but more important, the state's case was built on assumptions. Okay, 
if there's assumptions, if you're going to assume something, that means you're just assuming it without facts. So I highlighted that blue, and as you can see, I labeled it purpose. Um, that are not supported by evidence. So there's another example that this leads to violent behavior in real life. There's no evidence, and I'm labeling it evidence, but there is no research supporting this, and I labeled it evidence. So again, take the time to highlight everything blue that I did and label purpose and then don't forget to write your answer in the box. If you need to pause the video or you get caught up and do that, go ahead. All right, orange, the speaker. This is easy. It's the author. So I went where I saw by Cheryl, and I wrote her name in the box. I highlighted it orange. As you can see, I labeled it speaker right here so that I wouldn't forget what the orange stands for. I also actually found another place where the speaker identified herself in first person. I was one of the dozens. So I highlighted that orange and I labeled it speaker. Okay, so pause the video and make sure you identify in orange what I have before we go on to the next one. So if you need to pause the video, do so. All right, this is our last one, tone. So grab purple. Now you have to ask yourself, this tone is hard to prove, but you have to ask yourself, how does my author feel about what she's writing? Is my author angry? Turn your notes over. Remember all those examples we wrote down? Is my author angry? Is she frustrated? Is she happy? Is she excited? Is she calm? I felt that our author here was calm and collective. I thought that she was not getting fired up. I felt that she was constantly trying to point out to us both sides and that you can't make a decision about either side until you have more research. So because of that, I felt I wrote down that she was rational, she was practical, she was not biased, and she was impartial. I felt that she could remove herself from the situation because, you know, maybe she's not a parent, I don't know, but she's not overreacting for one side or the other. She's simply saying, hey guys, you both could be right, but until then, we have to get some more research. So I'm using my purple highlighter. I went through and you're going to look for places where she talks about how we don't know enough and how, and also find a place where she's calm. So this case serves only to highlight how little we know. I thought that would be a good one for purple. I highlighted that um, this certainly does not prove that the video games are harm, harmless. Again, her taking another side. So I, and I labeled it tone, as you can see, don't forget to label it tone next to the purple. Um, I found a bunch at the end. I highlighted that we need research. We know virtually nothing. Um, we need to reframe our view on games until we know more. This is excellent advice, but only if, but only if we are willing to consider that video games may have potential as well as risks. Again, taking both sides, being very calm, very neutral, not biased, impartial. So those are the reasons why I wrote down um, my answers here, okay? So if you need to pause the video, because I have a lot for tone, so pause the video for a second here and write down and, and or actually find everything I highlighted purple and identify it as tone on your paper. And don't forget to write down the answer. When all is said and done with a soapstone, it will look like this. You will have multiple colors on the actual article identifying uh, the parts of the soapstone. And you will, more importantly, have an answer sheet right here and this column has all of your answers on it, you won't have any text evidence because the text evidence is going to be simply highlighted. It's less writing for you and less work. So I think you're gonna like this highlighting um, idea. Otherwise, you would have had to have taken all of these answers and you would have had to hand write them over in this column. And I don't think that would be something that you were interested in doing because it would take forever. So there you have it. That is the soapstone, and I have modeled how to do one, 
and now you are going to practice doing one.